Hello spring fans! My name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you how to test your spring security code. They've added a whole slew of new features in spring security 5 that make it easy to test OpenID Connect both as a sign-in mechanism and when you set it up as a resource server using OAuth 2.0. Let's giddy up! This screencast is based on a blog post that we published way back in May of 2021. But you might notice we updated it recently here in February, and it now uses Spring Boot 263, Spring Security 561, and if you want, you can see all the changes there and the updates to the example there. I'm gonna to go to this GitHub repo, which contains the completed code for the example, and in here there's also a demo.adoc, adoc for ASCII doc. This is basically a file that I created that has the blog post in a condensed format. So there's just simple code that I can copy and make it all work without reading through the paragraphs of text. But I would encourage you, if you would like to know more about Spring Security Test, please read the blog post because it contains a lot more detailed information. So in this demo, I'll show you how to use Spring Security's mocking with Security Mock Server Configurers, Spring and its long class names, right? And Security Mock MVC Request Post Processors as well as authorization tests for the following patterns. Reactive WebFlux gateway with OIDC authentication, Servlet MVC REST API with JWT authorization. So in that scenario, we'll be setting up the Spring Boot application as a resource server, and then Reactive WebFlux REST API with opaque token authorization. Because OAuth 2.0 doesn't require that you send a JWT, it just requires that you send it a random string of characters. And guess what? A JWT is a random string of characters. Of course, you can decode it and it'll be, you know, JSON, but by default, it is just a random string of characters. So JWT can be an opaque token, but um, you might want to use OWASP's just opaque token feature where there isn't a JWT involved. So I'm going to put this on the left here. And we have a few prerequisites HTTP IE. So I already have that installed. And then Java 11. I have that installed as well. I recommend SDK man if you don't have Java installed or if you want to manage multiple Java versions, you can do things like SDK list Java and it'll show all the different versions that you can install. There's a whole bunch of open JDK builds now. Uh, there's Credo from Amazon there. There's Graal VM. There's open JDK from Java.net. And yeah, there's a whole bunch. So if you just did SDK install Java, it would install Java 17. And there's nothing in this tutorial that wouldn't work with 17. I'm just using 11 because that seems to be what most people are using. And then you'll need the Okta CLI as well. So if you don't have the Okta CLI installed, you can get it from cli.okta.com. And the brackets at the end of some of the steps will indicate IntelliJ Live templates that I will use. So you can find all of my live templates on GitHub at mrabel idea live templates and you can see it shows you how to import them into your project. So the beauty of this tutorial is you shouldn't even need to use the live templates because if you read the blog post or use this demo script you can just copy and paste the code and the cool thing about IntelliJ is if you copy and paste a Java class it'll actually create that whole file for you with all the proper Java code in it. So I will show you that but I'll also use the live templates. So the first thing is to test a WebFlux gateway or a Spring Cloud gateway with mock OIDC login. So let's start by creating a Spring Boot project. We're going to hit start.spring.io with Spring Boot version 263. We'll use a baster of API gateway and then the package name will just be an Okta package. Dependencies are Cloud Eureka for discovery so it can locate you know other services, microservices. Cloud Gateway, that's Spring Cloud Gateway. WebFlux, Okta, and Lombok. So we'll just go ahead and run that. And then we can CD into API Gateway. Oh, we're already in it. Look at that. All right. And if you don't have an Okta account, you can register using Okta Register. And I already have one, so I'm not going to override that one. And then if you already have one, you can do Okta Login, and it'll, you know, basically connect you with your existing org. Uh, I already have all that installed, so I'm going to do Okta apps create, and then I'll use API Gateway. I'm going to use web and the Okta Spring Boot starter. And the default redirect URIs will work just fine. Those are the defaults that uh, Spring Security uses for Okta. 
and then you can see it wrote everything to this source main resources application dot properties. So I'll open this up in IntelliJ and we'll put it on the right there. And then the first thing is to rename that properties file to a YAML file. I know some people don't like YAML, but some people do. So I'm just going to go ahead and rename it and not complain. And then I have this YAML syntax to name the application gateway as well as enable discovery and configure Okta and then configure Eureka as well. So I have a shortcut for that. I warned you about my live template. So SST gateway config is my shortcut. There we are. And then just copy these values for the Okta domain, client ID, and client secret. Okay, now we're good to go. And then add a spring security test dependency to the palm.xml. So I'll do that down here. Type dependency, spring security test. Take the defaults. IntelliJ is nice that it auto completes Maven coordinates for us. And then scope is test. And then we'll create a controller package and a user data and a user data controller in it. So start by creating that package. And this is the feature I wanted to show you how you can just copy a Java class. So if I were to just take this class right here and copy it right there, look, it puts it right in there. And then because we did add new dependencies to our palm.xml, you do have to click this little icon to load your Maven changes. Since we're using Lombok here, you do have to configure your IDE to support Lombok if you're going to run any sort of you know build commands in IntelliJ. So Lombok project. You can see how to install it in your IDE. If you were to go to not the four minute demo, but install, you know, Eclipse, for instance, tells you how to do it, IntelliJ, and makes it a lot easier to work with. Otherwise, you'll get errors and you'll be like, what's going on? Why is this working? And then user data controller is another class we need to create. User data controller. I have a shortcut for that. And so this is just returning the user's data so we can have access tokens and ID tokens in our browser that we can easily and copy and paste to test uh, endpoints with HTTPI. And so we're just taking in an authenticated principle here, an authorized client that's configured for Okta, and we're creating that new data object, setting the full name, the ID token, the access token, and just returning that. So not a whole lot going on there. And then we're going to create a security configuration in a security package. And this will enable OpenID Connect login and JWT authentication. And you'll see this is something that I didn't even uh, realize until recently. This is a WebFlux example, but I don't know if you knew this, but you know how you just find a security uh, filter chain bean. You can do the same thing for regular Spring MVC. And so I don't know if I'll show you any examples of that today, but that's something I recently learned that you don't have to extend, I think it's web security configurer or something like that. Um, you can actually do it this same way in Spring MVC. So we're, we're enabling WebFlex security and this already has a configuration on it. So I don't even think we need this one, but I'm going to keep it in here just for, you know, the fact that it'll work sake. Um, because, you know, I tested this beforehand and I didn't try removing that, so I'm not going to try removing it now. And so now we need to disable uh, the tests or, or Eureka lookup during tests because it'll work if you have, you know, Eureka lookup enabled, but you'll just get all kinds of logs um, in your console that kind of say it can't connect to Eureka. So I think it's just nice to get rid of those. So we'll create source test resources application test. YML and then Eureka client and it's got some good code completion in here register there we go false and fetch registry false okay and then we're going to activate that profile using active profiles and then we'll create a, another controller package under source test Java so that's the biggest mistake I made when I was doing this tutorial is I created it in the wrong package. So I created in like source main Java and well, tests just don't go there. So uh, we're going to call this controller and user data controller test. And this is going to leverage web test client and mock OIDC login. 
So take a look at it here. It configures Spring Boot Test. And we have some notes here. By default, that loads the web application context and provides a mock web environment. And then Auto Configure Web Test Client will initialize a web test client for you that can be injected into the test. And it also configures uh, the alternative is used uh, Web Flux Test, which also configures a web test client. But the test is limited to a single controller, whereas with this one, we can test multiple controllers. The first test, right, get no auth returns redirect login. That's pretty obvious. If you hit that endpoint, it's going to prompt you to log in. And then if you actually mock out with mock OIDC login and an ID token, it shows that if you hit that endpoint, you will actually get data back. So we can run those tests just by clicking uh, this run button here. And we do have to enable annotation processing. And of course, you could also do that from the command line using MVN test. All right, so the next thing we want to do is create a JWT microservice that has lodge listings using Spring Data REST. And on application load, a sample data set will be loaded up by an embedded MongoDB instance that's initialized by test containers. And then JWT access tokens will be decoded, verified, and validated locally by Spring Security in the microservice. So let's create a new Spring Boot app with MongoDB, Spring Data REST, and Eureka support. So again, Spring 2.6, uh, base of listings, and Okta Lombok Web, Data MongoDB, Data REST, and Cloud Eureka. And then if we see the end of listings, open that one up in IntelliJ, and add Spring Security Test and test containers. And then don't forget to save and reload your Maven settings in IntelliJ. Now we're going to rename this to YAML again. My listings config, you'll see your Octo domain there. Let's grab our uh, settings from our last project. And also an easy way to get your Octo domain is to just run Octo login. I know the uh, message isn't that specific because it says Okta org already configured, but we are working on changing that. And but it has your domain right there, and so you could copy and paste that as well. So just put that right there, and then create a model package under Java, and we're going to have an Airbnb listing model object. So it's got an ID, name, summary, property type, room type, bed type, cancellation policy. And an interface in it. Make sure and select interface, Airbnb. And you'll see this just has a uh, collection of resource relations. And then the path is to listing. And we're overriding the save method to have an authority of listing admin. So this will require that Spring Security identify as a user of having that authority. And then this repository REST resource is pretty slick because it makes it so this repository exposes uh, this model and the CRUD methods uh, straight to the UI. Not a great pattern. I think ThoughtWorks calls it a anemic domain model, but it's awesome for demos. So I'm going to use it. And then we're going to create a config package here and REST configuration. And this is to tweak the Spring Data REST responses. So configuration annotation, we're auto wiring that repository REST configuration. We're setting it to return the body when it creates something. By default, it won't. It'll just return, I think, a 201 that says it's created. And then expose IDs. It won't do that as well because by default, if you're doing REST properly, you actually have links to other objects instead of you know exposing the IDs to the client. But again, this is a demo. So then we're going to create a security configuration. And this will require JWT authentication for all the requests. So again, we're enabling web security. This time, this is an MVC example. It's not WebFlux. We're extending web security configure adapter. But like I was saying, that can actually be a spring filter chain as a bean. And then we're authorizing the request. Any request needs to be authenticated. And we're creating an OAuth2 resource server. And then this is a special thing that we add for the Okta Spring Boot Starter, where if you hit the endpoint in a browser, it'll return a 401, and you'll actually see an error message. By default, if you configure this with Spring Security without the Okta Starter, you would just get a blank page and maybe a message from your browser. But we, uh, we like to show something to the user. I'm going to update this test here. 
to enable the testing profile. And then we'll create application test just for tests. So source test resources, application test.yaml. And when I was practicing this, one thing that I noticed is if I spelled the file name wrong, then you would see a bunch of messages in your test logs, but it still works, right? So that's just it trying to connect to Eureka. And I just think it's nice to turn this off for tests since you don't need Eureka involved. So spring cloud discovery enabled. And we're going to say false. And now we're going to create an MVC test to verify the authorization. So we'll do this right in the root package, Airbnb. And so what this does is it uses test containers to first of all, you know, spin up a MongoDB container. And one thing I've noticed is if you have multiple projects using that test container and it's exposing it all on the same port, you will have conflicts because that port is already being used. So just be aware of that. And then first it starts by, you know, making sure that hitting that endpoint listing uh, needs to be authorized. And then with a valid token, you know, passing in a JWT, that's a nice feature of Spring Security Test and expect that it's okay. And then if it hits it uh, without the actual authority, that'll return forbidden. And then if it has that simple granted authority in there, it'll work and the ID won't be empty. So that's all pretty slick how that works. And we can run the test now with the MVNW tests. So you might have seen a stack trace at the end there. If you scroll up a bit, prematurely reached end of stream. I've noticed that over here, and so I put a note in there that you could ignore that because it doesn't really seem to affect anything. I think it's just because the MongoDB test container shuts down before the application context does. So not a big deal as far as I can tell. The last thing we're going to do is test a Webflux resource server, right? We just created a Spring MVC resource server with mock opaque token. So like I said, a resource server that, you know, conforms to OAuth can have an opaque token. The difference is with a JWT, it can do local validation. With opaque tokens, it generally talks to an endpoint to validate that random string of characters. So we'll start by creating a theaters microservice. It's going to use up here, we have DevTools, Data, MongoDB, Reactive, Webflux, OAuth2 Resource Server, and Cloud Eureka. So you might notice we're not using the Okta Spring Boot Starter, but you can still validate JWTs with Okta using it. So I'll go into the theaters directory here, open that up in IntelliJ. The first thing you'll want to do is add the Nimbus OAuth2 OIDC SDK, and it's required for token inspection. And of course, Spring Security Tests. We'll just add those right here. Maybe reformat because I like spaces more than tabs, but you can choose whatever you like. In fact, I have recently been made aware that tabs are kind of cool because, you know, some people like bigger spacing, some people like smaller, some people only like one space. So tabs have that flexibility, whereas spaces always are the same. We'll create an OIDC app on Okta with Okta CLI here. Okta apps create. We'll select the Spring Boot Starter, just like we did before, and the default redirect URIs. And then we'll rename the application.properties to YAML again, and we'll configure it. And then we'll create a location model object. And this just has that GeoJSON point then a theater object. This has an ID and a location. And then a theater repository. And that extends reactive Mongo repository. You'll notice it doesn't have any rest resource configure uh, to expose it via spring data rest. We'll create a controller. So what this does is it uses that theater repository and it returns all the theaters or it allows you to create one. But if you're going to create one, it requires that theater admin as a role. And this is a handy pre-authorized annotation. You can also use has role, but the difference is has role requires that you actually have a role underscore all caps prefix. And with has authority, you don't need that. 
now we can create a security package and the security configuration in it as well as a JWT opaque token introspector and so this is basically how you configure spring security to talk to that endpoint and get the authorities as well as everything else from there so it uses the uh, client ID of the client's secret and the introspection URI and then it introspects it enhances it and maps all those authorities from the group's claim on the authorization server to Spring Security Authority. Now we'll create security configuration. And you can see we have that security web filter chain requires everything to be authenticated, sets up an OAuth 2 resource server, and also configures an opaque token versus a JWT based resource server. And then has that re reactive opaque token introspector and it returns that that we just created. And then again in test we'll turn off talking to Eureka and then we'll create a theater controller test. So this starts with configuring MongoDB again. It's got that auto configure web test client. That's how it gets this bad boy. And then it sets it up on port 27017. If you talk to theater, expects it to be unauthorized. If you use an opaque token, it will return OK. So that's Spring Security's mock opaque token. That's very handy there. And then mock opaque token again. Uh, if it doesn't pass in a authority that matches what Spring expects, then it doesn't work. And then here, if you pass in that theater admin, you'll see it works just fine. So we can run that with MVN test. Oh, and you notice the uh, talking to Eureka there. That's because we didn't go here and set activated or active profiles, right, to test. So like I said, it clutters up your logs, but it doesn't make the test fail. And then one thing I wanted to point out was, uh, was down here, we've got these notes in here that I think make a good point. So if you're mocking uh, with mock opaque token, and you pass correctly through any authentication API and the mock authentication object will be available for the authorization mechanism to verify. So that applies to mock MVC, but this is likely why an invalid audience expiration or issuer in the token attributes is kind of ignored during this time, kind of test. So you can see here, we, if we create a JWT with an expired claim and invalid issuer and invalid audience, it actually works. So that is something that I'm going to show you how to fix by configuring an audience and, uh, and making it so even the test pass, but your code needs to be a little more robust. So in the same way, if the web test client or mock MVC mocks a different type of authentication than expected, the test might pass as long as the controller injects a compatible authentication type. So the test will pass depending on which method the test is expecting to be in the security context holder. For example, the listing service expects a JWT authentication, but the following Airbnb listing MVC test will pass, so with an opaque token. So that's just something to be aware of, and now I'll show you how to run everything. So first we'll configure a Eureka server, because we need that for everything to, to run together. We'll close this one down here, and we'll do this in the parent directory. And then if you go into Eureka, you'll need to configure it. First of all, you need to enable it as a Eureka server. So in Eureka application here, you can add enable Eureka server. And then rename the resources to YAML. And we're just going to configure it to run on a different port so there's no conflicts. We're just going to call it localhost. Don't register with itself or other, otherwise you'll get an infinite loop. And the service URL there is just the default. And then we can configure the API Gateway project to have routes to the various listings. So uh, let's go to API Gateway application here. And it's the same class, but it's just got a, a token relay gateway filter factory. And this is a pretty slick class. This allows you here to just apply that filter factory and it'll forward on any access tokens that you receive when you log into the gateway. So that's uh, really nice and easy to configure. And then we'll also create a Docker setup so we can run all of these with Docker Compose. So we're going to do take Docker. That does make their CDs into it. So we'll go into Docker here and open that up. And then we'll add a Docker Compose file. 
And this has got MongoDB in it. It's got a Mongo data path, which we will define in a moment, and API gateway. So we're going to build that as a Docker container. And it sets up the service URL, the listings, with uh, depends on Mongo and Eureka. And Eureka will load up on its ports. And then the theater is the last service there. And then we can get some MongoDB dump files from GitHub. So these are for uh, the data sets for the theaters and then for the listings and reviews. And we'll put this in a Mongo directory. So here, MongoDB data and fetch those two. And then we'll get the listing and reviews as well. And then PWD, so we know where we're at. And then we need to update this Mongo data path, right, to point to where that is. And then we'll create a initdbsh file and copy this code into it so it pulls all that data. And then we'll build each service image with this command. Spring Boot 2.3 and above has Docker support built in, so it'll publish it right to a local Docker listing. So first of all, we're going to do API Gateway. And we can actually skip the test since we already ran those. And then we can run multiple of these at once. So uh, some of them are using uh, test containers with MongoDB, and I mentioned that there will be some conflict. So that's why it skipped tests. And it's faster. Oh, and then we need to do one for Eureka as well. And we'll exit out of those and CD into Docker. And now we can run Docker Compose up. And you could also pass in dash D and it would run it as a daemon. But I like this view because you can see all the different services starting up. Then we can open it in Eureka 8761. And you can see here that not everything is started yet. No instances available. So if we refresh, we're starting to get it. And look, they're all up. So that looks good. And now we can go to localhost 8080 user data. That'll prompt us to log in. Comes back and we have that ID token and that access token, right? And we can also go up here and test theater. The large file, you can see the scroll bar is really small. That's all the data that came from the data we loaded for Airbnb. And then the listings and reviews, you can see all those as well. So that's all working. And then we can test authorization to a you know, that listings endpoint to create a new listing. So we'll copy the access token value here. Make sure you don't get any quotes in there. And open up a new terminal. And we'll set that as a variable. And then we'll run this HTTP post command. You'll see that post to listing, just a name of test, and it has that access token. Well, we get a 403 forbidden because we don't have the proper scopes, right? Uh, expects that list admin authority to accept that post request. And so the Okta Spring Boot starter will automatically grab the groups from Okta if you have a groups claim configured. So we need to log in and configure that. So if you do Okta login, you can get the URL there, log into your Okta admin console, and you'll go to security, API, default, authorization server, and then claims. And so we'll add one called groups. And you can add it to the access token or ID token. I'm just going to add it to the access token here. Set the value type to groups. And match regex is dot star, meaning all of them. And then any scope. And so you can also add it to the ID token um, if you want Spring Security when you do uh, OIDC login to add it. To your ID token. We won't need it for this one though. Um, but this we're going to have to now do an incognito window. And then our access token is right here. So we can do access token to our new one and then try the request again. Still didn't work. Ah, I know why. I didn't create like the group, right? So I'll go back here. And we go to directory, groups, and the group was listing admin, lowercase. All right, save that group. And then you have to add your user to it. 
So assign people, I only have one in here. Save it. And now that should work, but again, we have to do the incognito window. So grab that URL, close this one, do it again. And now our access token should have that group's claim in it. We could verify it at token.dev or jwt.io. If you look, now it has those groups in there. So we should be able to do access token. And now that will work. So create the listing, return the body of it, and that makes it you know easier to see. Back to our instructions. This shows you what you need to do. And you know, I should have followed my own instructions, right? Because then I would have known that I need to create that role and add the user. So now we're gonna change the listings project uh, to have a different audience. And so you can see how it works if you change the audience. So in the listing projects application.yaml, we're gonna add this audience. The default is API colon slash slash default. So we're changing it here. To have a different audience and then we'll rebuild the listings service image. And I'll go ahead and stop the Docker containers back here while we do that. Listings, there we are. And then we'll restart all our containers. Docker compose up. Grab our access token again, localhost 8080, user data. Set that access token and hit that same listings endpoint. You'll see this time it says invalid token. The odd this odd claim is not equal to the configured audience. So that's a much better way to you know lock things down and make sure it all works. Now your spring security test will still pass, but uh you know that's something to consider. Oh, well, let's see. Do they still pass? I don't think they will because I think you need to pass in an audience now. So MVN test. Let's see. I don't know. It failed because. Uh, you know, we're trying to talk to that Mongo that's running in Docker. You wouldn't think, but, you know, they're both running in Docker, so I guess so. Let's try it again. There we go. So you can see that audience thing is like, even though you're, you know, mocking parts of the JWT out, it might not always be what's happening in a, a real world scenario if you've configured things different. So, you know, I hope you enjoyed this screencast and uh, understand more about the security mock server configurers for Spring Security's WebBlocks test support and Security Mock MVC request post processors and Spring MVC's test support. Of course, you can find all the code on GitHub if you go to Okta Spring Security test example and please read the blog post if you want more information because it's got a whole lot more in here than what I showed you. But also you can copy and paste all the code without needing my shortcuts. If you like this screencast, please follow me on Twitter. You can also follow my team on Twitter at Octodev. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Smash that subscribe button and come back to watch many more useful tutorials like this with Spring Boot, Spring Data, and just a bunch of cool open source tools. I hope you have a great day. Cheers.